Hi, my name is Coco with BlackFilm.com, and I am here with Lamaya Good, Yolanda Adams, Keandra Richardson, Soraya, and Tamar Braxton. Thank you all so much for joining me. No, thank, thank you for being here. It, it's so good to be in the presence of so many people with such a gift, right? Like I'm just, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you, you hear these voices, and I'm just just so excited about that. And I just want to know from a performance stand, standpoint, what's it like? Um, you know, all of you are excellent singers, but in this role, you all have to act 100% and you have to sing 100%. So when you're dialing into both sides of yourself and having to give it your all twofold, you know, what does that really um, draw out of you? And I'll start with you, Lamaya. Oh, okay. Hey, roll it on out. How you doing, girl? <laughs> hey, girl. <laughs> um, <I'm> God. <laughs> so, yes, girl. Um, <laughs> No, I think, you know, obviously as an artist, I think for me, anytime I get a chance to do, to use multiple parts of my dynamic, my talent, for me, that's a blessing. You know, honestly, mm -hmm. I was scared for sure when I first got this. I said, Lord, now, you know, I ain't been saying, I ain't been doing no group in 20 years. What is we talking about? <laughs> but, you know, that really challenged me. And, you know, I love expressing myself in all these different ways. And to get to come to work and to do all that at once, for me, mm -hmm. is just like, just nostalgic and in the future all, all at once. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and Tamar, um, you know, going into season two, um, Sasha approaches, and I'm, I'm not going to give this away at all, but she approaches Danita with a proposition that kind of surprisingly on instinct, she kind of was like, mm, I'm not supposed to do that. So uh, I'm curious because I did watch the first um, two episodes, so I don't really know where this is going because this story has so many plot twists. You know, what's it like to kind of play this role where you get to kind of be a little bit devious and like have fun with that? Like, what's that like to play that kind of role? Oh, Sasha is the half of that all of us have met before. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's really, really fun to be able to, you know, pretend to be so devious. Right. Um, but also, you know, you can almost identify with her persistence on, you know, making her dreams come true by any means necessary. Mm -hmm. And um, I appreciate that about, you know, Sasha, not mm -hmm. all the way she goes about it, but, you know, <laughs> the, all the no's that she get in all the doors that closes in her face, um, I can definitely identify with, um, you know, never letting go of your dreams, no matter what anybody has to say about mm -hmm. that. So I love that. Mm -hmm. And, and Soraya, you know, um, Rebel is in a bit of a transition right now. She's kind of going back to what she knows, but she's also just very strong-willed. And one of the things, because I, sp I actually spoke with you and Miss Yolanda Adams before um, regarding the um, the first season, but, you know, it's like, in my opinion, I do think that regardless of the decisions that she has to make, I think that she actually is actually the most relatable character in a sense where it's like, she's just going to go for what she wants. And I think it's very realistic to have her dip in and out of these worlds because, you know, we're not all perfect people and we're all, you know, we're all judged, right? But what's it like to play a character like that where it's like, you know, it's like there's so much judgment of the person. Oh, it's very interesting. Um, <laughs> well, growing up in church myself, I, I understand the world and I understand how someone like Rebel can disrupt and make noise and make people feel uncomfortable or, you know, cause a lot of like, you know, just, just havoc. But, um, <laughs> but it's exactly what you said, like playing, playing the character, it allows me to be involved in something purposeful. And I think one of the main things that I do get from being on this show, playing Rebel is just, wow, I didn't know that, I would have watched this show, but now that I watch it, it's really not what I expected. Mm -hmm. And I think that she brings that side of the show um, to light because we're all flawed. We're all, mm -hmm. we all have backgrounds, have done things we we want to do or maybe didn't really was so happy about doing. So I think she's, like you said, she's relatable. And I'm just so glad to play that character, um, especially for women my age, um, especially for, for Black women and, mm -hmm. women and people in general um, that may be going through the same things as Rebel, finding their spirituality, finding mm -hmm. who they are, having gone through so much in their life um, and, and not knowing really where, where to go, who to turn to, who to trust. Mm -hmm. um, 
you know, and I think that's that's just something that's relatable to everyone. Spirituality is something that people come across, whether they grew up with it or not, sometime in their lifetime, and they get interested and they have questions. and And I think that's that's who Rebel represents. So, um, it's it's really cool to play her because I I feel her on so many levels. Sometimes it's really annoying <laughs> <laughs> because I'm like, oh, like I felt this before, and these are real emotions, mm -hmm. and you know, it's deep. But um, I could say that. I really do enjoy it for that specific reason. No, that, that's great to tap into something like that. Um, mm -hmm. So, Keandra, you know, listen, for those of us, and I'm, you know, it, obviously a lot of us have backgrounds in the church, right? Um, given, you know, you know, we've all grown up in some kind of capacity, right? So we can all relate to that. I would like to think, like, when you think about the church, right, you know, it's funny, and, and many people might not think that. You'd think that people that are in a church are going to operate in good faith at all times, you know? And you'd like to think you can go to church and mind your business, pray with together, sing together and do your quiet solo type of thing and go home. But it doesn't necessarily work like that. So what is it like when you think about the roles here and what you all have to do, Keandra, and the fact that it's like the drama's in the church too. It's not just on the secular side. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's real life. It's mm -hmm. people are human. At the end of the day, you have ministry, you have the church, but pe we are humans having to express the word of God, having to express the heart of God, the mind of God, the mind of Christ. And so it's like, it's it's a natural dynamic that we all have to balance, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so I think the show does a good job at portraying the mm -hmm. fact that we are human and mm -hmm. we also love God, you know, mm -hmm. and we can be both at the same time. And it may not look beautiful all the time. It may not look as holy as people <laughs> think, you know, mm -hmm. um, but we balance it and mm -hmm. we somehow make it work. <laughs> Do, and I, I think just another thing that I will compliment you all with in, time, in terms of this show is I think a lot of times when people see a show that does incorporate some spirituality or God or things like that, they may feel like it's inaccessible to them. However, they should know that with this show, it really is a strong show. And, and even though there are faith-based messages in this show, but it doesn't mean that it's it's something that's not accessible to individuals right. that may not necessarily walk that path, right? Yeah. Because life is faith-based, really, you know, yeah. anything that you do, you have to, if you think something or believe something, you have to have faith that it's going to get done if you want something to get done. So really, it's it's not really a separation, I feel, mm -hmm. um, between faith and real life. You just have to... Mm -hmm. No, I'm not. No. I, I agree. But I, agree. You know, I don't want to get too deep into it. <laughs> I mean, I, 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 look, I kind of do it. It may not be for here, but I... I <laughs> yeah, you know, I know what I'm saying? It, Everybody, I, in some sense, you have right. to have faith in some way. We are just you know, coming from the church perspective, but exactly. it really is involved in everyday life, just like anything. I, I happen to agree. And Miss <laughs> Miss Yolanda Adams, yeah. um, <laughs> I've spoken with you before, the queen, right? There's yeah. so many layers um, to what has happened to Danita, right? And while we're trying to get to the bottom of everything that's going on, she has her own journey to try to piece together um, with who to trust. Um, and she's learned something pretty explosive about Darlene. Um, let's talk about her fight in season two. Like I said, I, I don't want to spoil anything, but I'm two episodes in and I just don't know where this is going because you never know. But I love it. I love that about it. <laughs> That's why you have to watch now. Exactly. <laughs> I'm tuned. <laughs> well, you, you, uh, uh, as Keandra and everyone has said so eloquently, mm -hmm. each one of us, whether mm -hmm. it's a person we depict or our own personal selves, mm -hmm. each one of us has layers. We, you know, you don't grow up and be, in my case, 62 mm -hmm. and not have layers of something that has happened to you in your life. And mm -hmm. what Danita has been good at is suppressing everything, hiding everything, compartmentalizing everything, mm -hmm. and keeping the focus on what her father and her mother have told her all her life. Everything you do is for the kingdom. Look, forget what you messed up on. Everything you do is for the kingdom. Okay, lie. Everything is for the kingdom. Okay, cuss folks out. Everything is for the kingdom. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And then by the time she gets to where she is, all of these emotions are exploding in her because, you know, she's the ice queen. She's the protector. She's the mother who's trying to make sure her family doesn't look like her parents' family. And in trying to protect them from doing that, she winds up just like her mama and her daddy. Mm -hmm. Oppressive, mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. <laughs> mean, icy, mm -hmm. all of those things. But... She's cute while she's doing it. <laughs> okay. And so um, Darlene 
really is, I don't want to say, I don't want to like give it away, give it away, but Darlene is like the G of the family. Yeah. She yeah. is, she, you talk about God father. Yeah, this is the God father mother. <laughs> she, she's been manipulating things mm -hmm. underneath without Danita actually knowing. Because remember, Danita is a mom, a, a daddy's girl. Mm -hmm. And so her, she and Darlene have clashed all her life because Darlene, Darlene has felt that Danita took away her opportunity. Danita took away her shine. Everything Danita was doing, she was supposed to be doing had she not gotten pregnant with Danita. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that whole aspect of mother-daughter thing, oh, and don't, we all, don't we all know it? <laughs> and don't they just don't happen to be church people. Right. <laughs> so you got to pray about it. <laughs> well, so well, you got to do more than pray, as we will see. But life is life, you mm -hmm. know. And yeah. Kiana said it so well. Faith is a part of every day. Yes, that you is. have faith when yes, you get into a, you have faith when you get into an Uber that that Uber driver is going right. to take you to point mm. what. You have faith in that Starbucks coffee that it's not going <laughs> to You have faith <laughs> in that vegan salad that, you know, you've been right. eating all that. You know, it's, it, you have faith in life, period. Yeah. And we don't call it that. We just call right. it living. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's I, I, real. I, I'm going to circle it back to you, Lamaya, um, because, you know, you were kind of joking at first. But, I mean, how does it feel? Because when you're on a cast like this, you know that you bring a special presence. Like, these are, like, none of y'all, like, it's not to be played with as far as the vocals. So when you say to yourself, like, girl, I ain't been in no group in 20 years. Like, what you talking <laughs> about? So when you say to yourself that you're trusted to be in an environment like this where you didn't necessarily, maybe maybe not expect or just, you know, didn't necessarily know you'd be put into the forefront of a show like this. Like, how proud are you of yourself? And you could brag a little bit that you're amongst these kinds of friends. No, you know, um, there's a real testimony, even how this whole thing came about. <clears throat> Number one, I stopped reading for Robbie Reed a long time ago. I was <laughs> scared of her. And there was just something in me that every time I would just like mess up. Number two, you know, um, uh, Devon, you know, I knew that he, uh, you know, he knows I act, he knows I'm in the business. So I just really didn't want, you know, I heard about the show way before I auditioned for it. And, you know, I didn't want no handouts. I didn't want, you know, mm -hmm. my mom kept saying like, why don't you just ask them? I'm like, no, they know where I'm at. They know where I'm at. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I realized that there was a fear in me that if I did get a call, um, you know, I have this like, self-sabotaging thing that I've done in the past. And as mm. I get older, you know, I'm growing out of it. And God puts me in positions where I'm going to retest and retest mm -hmm. until I get it right. So, mm -hmm. you know, um, I was terrified to audition, you know, um, and I was just thinking, how funny is this, God? This is something um, that I stepped away from in mm -hmm. my life to begin my family, to do, pursue other things in my life that are important to me. Um, but I definitely wasn't done with it. And I didn't want to do it in that way. I didn't see myself like going back out on the road like that mm -hmm. necessarily. So I just said, God, you are something else. <laughs> because you said, look, I'm going to give you that and more because mm -hmm. this is really a, where I want to be. I want to um, really go further in my in my acting and, and in my career. This is where I want to be. So to have a chance to tie the two together for me really is a testimony, you know, on so many levels. So mm -hmm. yeah, I was terrified. I saw Robbie. <laughs> she was the first face that popped up too. I was like, <laughs> we going to do this. <laughs> And it, I was, was just so proud of myself, man. So no, proud of myself. That's great. It's so such proud a good of you. Yes, let's give a round of applause. Yes, ma'am. You love my sisters. I, love you I too. love this for and you. And yes, ma'am, she can still sing. I don't know what I don't know what she's doing. <laughs> Girl, oh, that's another thing. thing. Like, Wait a minute. Now they told me that song with uh, Yolanda. Now they need to quit playing. I said, now y'all, you're taking it too far. You're taking it too far. Now, you know I can't be in there. So you, I'm doing a lot of acting in that scene. I'm doing a lot of acting because I'm like, hold on, I got to compensate. You know, she over here, you know, Miss Yolanda the Queen. So that was also, I said, God, you are so good, you know, to have that no, you, experience. You're, you're he played, put you in position for, for a reason. And, um, you know, it, it was so nice to talk to you ladies. And, and again, I, I really enjoyed the show and I enjoyed talking to all of you. So I've actually 
talked to you about a couple of times. And yes. this is not Adam. This is <laughs> so good to see you. <laughs> this is good to see you. No, and I, and I enjoy speaking to all of you ladies. Um, it, it's been such an honor. And you guys, it is King the Business. It is on BET Plus season two. Okay, it's good. Uh, you don't have to be in the church. It'd be kind of nice if you you know decided to go a few times. You know, but <laughs> uh, but you'll you'll enjoy it regardless. <laughs> Once again, my name is Coco with Blackfilm.com. I'm here with Lamaya Good, Yolanda Adams, Keandra Richardson, Soraya, and Tamar Braxton. It was lovely to talk to all of you. Thank you so much for your time. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. you. Take care. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. I was going with my Christmas hat, but I was like, you know what? They're going to clown me. Let me not do that. <laughs> Girl, it's the season. <laughs> exactly. <Yes. laughs> Bye, y'all. Bye. 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 If you want to see more content like this on blackfilm.com, make sure you like, subscribe, and ring that bell.